Hey everybody, I'm going to be reviewing the relics coming to Smite in Season 9. And we're just going to kind of get into it because there's a lot of relics to go through, but the video is timestamped, so you can go and see which relics you uh, you want to see. Now, there are now Tier 3 relics as well as in different upgrade paths for them, so I'll be showing you guys the base relic. The middle upgrade is always just the same upgrade, but maybe like... Uh, the cooldown's a little bit lower, but it's almost always very similar. I guess there's a few exceptions to that. But uh, we have a left path and right path, and we'll be going through all of them. Let's start off with Cursed Ankh. Okay, so Cursed Ankh did get changed in a few ways. Now, Tier 1 Cursed Ankh, it lowers, uh, you know, you use it on enemies, and it lowers their healing by 40%, and it also removes 70%, 75% of all current shield, which is pretty cool. Now, also Tier 1 uh, Cursed Ankh now has it so that they take 10% more damage from all sources for the duration of the curse. And I think that is only if they're healed, yes. So, you know, you pop Cursed Ankh, if they heal, now they're going to take 40% less healing, their shields are reduced by 75%, and then uh, they take 10% additional damage if they were healed. So, let me go, let me sell this real quick. The tier 2 is pretty much the same thing. I think the only difference is that the cooldown is less, right? Yeah. So it's 100 seconds instead of 120. Um, okay, so let's go with Blighted Ankh. So Blighted Ankh is the same thing, except it is now... Note that it's 60% anti-heal instead of the 40%. So that's already amazing. And then... Um, if they're, they heal during the duration, they're going to take 20% more damage. So that's like old Cursed Ankh. So better old Cursed Ankh. And then all healing reduced by this effect is instead distributed to your allies in a 40 unit radius around you. So that's pretty amazing. So if you pop it on an enemy and they get healed, it's distributed to you and your allies. Now in duel, I mean, I guess it's just distributed to you, right? You just steal 60% of your, their healing for their, that duration. Combine that with Tainted Steel, and if it works the way I think it is, uh, that that would be absolutely incredible. I'm pretty sure it would work like that. I'm unfortunately unable to test it at the moment, but that's a good relic. Let me go a little bit faster. The Cursed Onk is probably the most complicated. So now we have Drowned Cursed Onk. This is the only relic they showed on Patch Show, show I believe. But this one is, it lowers the anti-heal by 40%, so it's, the anti-heal is not as strong. Removes 75% of the shield, so that's the same. And what this does is it causes a pool of, what is that, miasma, <laughs> I'm still saying that wrong, to form beneath them that persists for 6 seconds. Miasma deals 2% of the enemy's current health every 0.5 uh, seconds while enemies are inside it and refreshes the, the Ankh debuff duration. So, this one, I guess, uh, oh I can't really show it, but um, they did show this on patch notes in my, it's in my other video, when they are healed... I don't think there's a way that I could proc it and then change teams and heal him. <laughs> but when he's healed, it'll drop a little pool. It's about like a Jormungandr pool size. And yeah, it'll just be reapplying the Cursed Onk, which is amazing. And it'll also damage him based on his percent health. And it does apply it to all of the enemies you hit them with. So if I hit five enemies and all five of them get healed, it's going to make five pools. So that's a pretty good relic. Again, sorry that I can't show that one. The other relics I'll be able to show. So let's start off. Let's show uh, Aegis. So, you know, got good old Aegis. Just makes you immune. So that's the regular one. Same thing. Just don't take damage. Tier 2 is just uh, 30 seconds off the cooldown. Now, Aegis of Acceleration. This one's interesting. Pretty much. So each instance of damage prevented in this time provides you with 7% move speed for 7 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. So what we can actually do, let's see, I need to I I respawn the minions for this to work. But it does work for all types of damage. It does not, um, it's not god exclusive, but let's say I use Aegis here. Each tick of damage, I get a stack for it, and you can see that I'm getting some movement speed. So that will work for god damage, minion damage, any type of damage. But being able to use it in a minion wave is pretty cool. And it is a lot of movement speed. 21% movement speed while not taking damage. I mean, that's pretty good. However, I like the other Aegis more. And both of these work on any type of damage, which is cool. So this one, at the end of vulnerability, you explode dealing 100 plus 50 percent of the prevented damage as magical damage in a 30 unit radius the damage dealt by this effect is capped at 30 percent of your maximum health so 
Uh, let me just show it. It's easier to visualize this one. Again, works with any type of damage. Of course, minions don't deal that much damage, but you, you can get the idea. So let's say a Poseidon's coming at me and I hit Aegis for the Kraken and I get close to him. Well, half of that damage is going to hit him. And of course, you have to keep in mind it's capped based on your percent health, so it's better for tanks. But still, I think Aegis of Judgment is a very really cool item. It's, it's like Thorns. Um, yeah, it's, it's like a, a new version of Thorns. I really like it. The fact that it does magical damage will probably me make it picked up a Warriors more. Especially in like a dual setting. I can imagine Warriors with this plus Thorns. So yeah, those are those. Alright, let's keep going. Okay, so next up on the list is Sprint. So we have regular Sprint. It just gives you and allies 20% move speed and immune to slows. So that's the same. So let's sell that. We already know how that works. Um, the tier two, is it actually stronger? As far as I can tell, no. It just has a less of a cooldown. Um, okay, so let's go Entangled Wings. Entangled Wings. Increases move speed by 20% for five seconds, immune to slows. But on use, this relic also roots enemies in the area for one second. So this, I think, is pretty insane. But look at this. Look at that. That's pretty good. Um, it may not feel that good, but I, I, if you combine it with some other CC or, you know, you're just trying to get away, especially because Sprint is used as trying to get away or trying to go on somebody, being able to root them and then keep chasing them or being able to root them and run away, I think that is extremely powerful, even if it's only one second. And then now, of course, we have Haste and Wings. So this is similar to old upgrade Sprint, but it's a little different. So this grants haste um, so that you can, you know, keep auto attacking without losing movement speed for a duration. Successful basic attacks increase the duration by one second up to four seconds. So the duration is four seconds already, but you can increase it to eight seconds. So, so that's just normal, right? But if I pop it, you look, look at my hotbar, you see that the duration is increasing. And I actually thought only the haste increase for four seconds but it looks like you actually keep the movement speed too so you keep the entire effect that i love on ymir i think that's going to be my go-to ymir aggressive item almost more than blink honestly however we will get to blink blink is cool all right so what's the next relic sometimes i have to reopen this or open this menu there we go all right oh blink is next perfect so regular blink just bop instantly teleport 140 seconds this one's instantly teleport 120 seconds everything else is the same it looks like all right so let's go corrupted blink on teleporting slow all enemies movement speed and attack speed by 15 percent so this is like a hor horrific kind of combined into it so if i do that you can see how small the dr the area is but i think that is pretty strong now, keep in mind, it's only for 2.5 seconds, and I mean, with the sprint, you could root them. Rooting is a lot stronger, but still, I, I kind of like it. I like it, but what everybody's talking about, what everybody loves, is Scorching Blink. When you blink, you leave a trail of wildlife wildfire that burns enemies that pass through it for 20 plus 4 per level. True damage every 0.5 seconds for the next 4 seconds. Enemies are damaged for 1 second after leaving the flames. So if I do this, it's like Agni 3. And actually a huge amount of damage. That was 500. And again, it is true damage. It scales with level. So you could be a full tank and do this and get a huge amount of damage. You could cut off paths in the jungle. Uh, I, I think it's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good for running away if you're able to get it off, like those hype plays where you blink over a wall to get away, damage them a little bit. Good for aggressing. Uh, but yeah, good stuff overall. All right, next is beads. So we've got regular beads. You know, you get hit by crowd control, use this. Can't be stunned. Pretty much already know how that works. Um, that's 170 seconds. This one is 140 seconds. Now here is chaotic beads. Any hard crowd control effect that is cleansed during this time, including on activation, sends out a homing projectile to the enemies who applied it, dealing 77% of their maximum health. So I actually haven't seen this in game, and I don't think I can actually show it. Is it only enemy gods? 
No, it looks like uh, maybe I can show it on Fire Giant. But this seems powerful if you guys can coordinate it. Let's see. Do you do your knock up? Or are you old Fire Giant? I actually don't think that worked. <laughs> I think it might be only enemy gods. Yeah. But, you know, you get the picture. So let's say Ares is pulling up five of you. Five of you activate this. It's going to go to him and deal 35% of his maximum health. I don't know. Is it true damage or is it magical damage? Because if it's true damage, that's insanely dumb. That's OP. <laughs> I'm trying. I also can't think of any roots that like constant or strong CC that constantly reapplies. A lot of them are kind of like a apply one and done type thing. And then if you cleanse it, you're just cleansed. So could be powerful in the wrong hands, but we'll, we'll see. Um, I think that's pretty cool to have though. Kind of like a, it's a way that tanks can get like uh, beads with while still being aggressive. So I, I like that. Okay, so we also have this one, temporal beads, and this is what mages and stuff are probably gonna get. Additionally, your active cooldowns are reduced by three seconds on use. So pretty good. This is what beads used to be back in the day, tier three beads back in season one, season two. You, you know, and look at my cooldowns. And you get to use this again. Now, I don't have any cooldown right now, but three seconds is very strong if you time it right. Can I, I remember getting a huge amount of kills with this back in the day? So yeah, can be can be strong in the right situations. Can be abused in the right situations. Okay, teleport. I actually don't know what the teleports are. Uh, teleport to a structure while rooted in place is not interrupted by damage. Okay but interrupted by crowd control. So that's pretty standard. I don't think I can use it. I might not be able to show this one here. So uh, let's just read read it. If I have to show it, then we'll, we'll see. So heroic teleport allows you to teleport to wards, understandable. And after teleporting, you gain slow immunity, 20% move speed and 40 protections for 10 seconds. So you can teleport in, go help your team out for a while. That's kind of nice, but the teleport still takes a while to go off. And then persistent teleport. You can teleport to a ward. Kills and assists on enemy gods reduce this cooldown by 10 seconds. That's a 90 second cooldown. So this one's pretty interesting. I think if you're going to try to split push or something, this would be what you would do because you would just help your team out, go split push, and then uh, teleport back to the fight if somebody comes to stop you or something like that. I don't know. But I could see persistent teleport being picked up a little bit more than heroic teleport if only because... With heroic teleport, by the time you get in, eh, you I don't know how often you're going to actually be using the stats. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty much normal teleport. Uh, I don't think I have to show it. Just reading it is probably enough to get an idea for it. So cloak, meditation, you heal over time. Based on percent missing health and mana, it's a 150 second cooldown. Is this one more? No, this is the same. This is a 130 second cooldown. And then here we go. Cloak of the As Asetic? I don't, I don't know. So this one is nearby allies, allies, gods within 35 units restore 30 plus 6% of their missing health and mana each, uh, each pulse. That is a lot. That is a huge amount. Whoa. Where is it? Maybe. No, it's, I guess it's not. But for this one, I guess I can change teams. We're not really going to see it, but let's see. Uh, change teams. I just kind of walk over here. So pretty. Oh, I have. The, no, I have the right one. Additionally, each pulse reduces cooldowns for all abilities by 1.5 seconds. That was pretty standard before. Um, it, it, I think it's good if you combine it with temporal beads, Bumba's hammer. You know, you're going for that type of build. So definitely usable in some builds. All right, let's change this. Cloak of the Avatar. You also gain a protective barrier of wind that explodes if an enemy comes within 15 units, knocking them back. So this one is pretty defensive of a meditation. So uh, where's my change teams? Am I blind? Yes. So if I use this... I think it's a one and done type thing though. 
yeah. But pretty, pretty good if you're against an assassin, you know, Loki alts you and you pop this, then he's going to get knocked back. Like, that's huge. That's huge on squishy gods against assassins or warriors or that type of thing. I actually think this one's incredibly good. Um, but yeah, that's all that one does. It doesn't lower your cooldown. Still, still good. Still a solid uh, self-peel item. All right, we've got shell. Regular shell is shields for 100 health plus 12 health per god. Additionally, all eyes take 20% reduced damage from basic attacks. Oh, tier 1 shell does that. That's cool. Uh, tier 2 is pretty much the same thing, just lower cooldown. And then tier 3. Let's just use this one real quick to show how much it is. Okay. Cool. All right, so now tier 3. Fortifying shell. Additionally, all allies take 40% reduced damage from base attacks while the shield is active. When the shield is broken or expires, allied gods gain a new buff preventing 15% damage mitigation. Oh, providing 50% damage mitigation, 20% movement speed. Sorry, I'm a little bit tired today, but I did want to make this video. So, so the shit, so it's got to be broken. Oh, that's interesting because usually you just want to eat through the shield. Maybe you don't want to do that anymore in some situations. So let's see if I can use a fire giant for that once again. So it's broken. I kind of got... I mean... Maybe it doesn't do it for yourself. But it's only... For, no, it's only for three seconds. Well... I don't know. That doesn't seem that good if I'm being honest. I mean, the regular 40% reduced base dam, uh, damage from auto attacks is good. But the other part's kind of weird. Alright, Phantom Shell. This one is pretty cool. So... Pretty self-explanatory. They removed Phantom. They added it onto Shell. I think it'll actually be picked up a huge amount now because it's got the it's got the positives of shell but still got the phantom part so good stuff 130 second cooldown glad that they kept shell i mean kept a uh, phantom while finding a way to make it useful okay we're almost there all right thorns regular thorns reflects 30 percent of damage you take before mitigations that's big um for five seconds if you dealt uh, basically, if you dealt too much damage, it ends early. And also, they can also enemies can only life steal from you for seventy five percent of their total life steal. They changed the wording on that. I believe it's the same amount. Um, but yeah, so let's buy it. I already have it. So I pop that. If I get hit, it reflects back to them. They're life stealing a little bit less as well. That's pretty much the same. So let's check the upgraded versions. Thorns of Overgrowth. So this one, they can only life steal 50%, so half of their regular life steal. Additionally, you gain a stack of 5% movement speed and attack speed for all enemy gods within a 40 unit radius. So I, this one I can show pretty easily, thankfully. So let's use this. I have two stacks, I have three stacks, two stacks. You can kind of see the range for it. Let's, let's go and uh, I might just buy Relic Dagger too. Not that it makes a difference, I still have to sell these. But yeah, you can kind of see how I get some move speed and attack speed or whatever. Pretty useful, I'd say. Now, in-game, you can only get <laughs> uh, five capped. So even though there's enemy bots here, it caps at five. But pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think the other one is better, though. Let's go sell this. I forget what it does. Thorns of Sapping Strength. Also, I should mention this one reflects 25% of damage you take. So it's actually less than the tier 1. This one reflects 35% of damage you take. So this one is each base attack from enemy gods reduces cooldown of this item by 0.5 seconds. So if you run into a team of hunters with this, you pop this and they're just auto attacking you because they don't care. I mean, you get the cooldown pretty fast. And look, with Relic Dagger, <laughs> this is already a 50 second cooldown. Which is... It actually feels like it's less than it should be. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because it says 80 seconds. And was this... Oh, this reduced it by 40 seconds. So never mind. This is a 40 second cooldown. So you pop this. You get hit by 10 auto attacks. That's another, what, uh, 5 seconds off of it? Like, that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. I like it. However, it does not last that long at the end of the day. It's only two seconds. This is five seconds. Keep that in mind. I do 
like having the thorns up more often. Like, I think I would build this on Kuzumbo. But, you know, combine that with Relic Dagger, it's pretty cool. All right, now we've got our good friend Sunder. So regular Sunder uh, does true damage, 7.5% of their current health. And it reduces active shields by 75%. And they take 5% uh, increased damage. You can hit people twice. So I do that. That's actually not new. That was introduced last season where you could fire it twice. So let's sell this. And now let's get the upgraded ones. Uh, tier 2 looks like just lowers the, the cooldown as always. I recommend just going from tier 1 to tier 3. I don't think paying for the tiny bit reduction is worth it most of the time. So this one, it's a splashing sunder. 15% of their current health as true damage and reducing any active shields by 75%. So let's try this. Wow, that's a pretty big splash. Whoa. So again, not really a dual item, but in other game modes, that's pretty that's pretty good, being able to sunder them all. If you're against a high shield comp and you get this, that's, that's awesome. Again, you could always go Curse Donk instead, but still. Okay, so let's go get the other one. Sucks when I walk all the way over there. I have to walk all the way back. Let's get Blink so I can just <laughs> be fast. Okay. Sundering Siphon. Oh, I forgot to read the name of this one. It's Sundering Blast, by the way. Sundering Siphon. So this one, the range is actually shorter by 20 units because this one's 70, this one's 50. Um, this one, it links the it links the enemy to you and they're dealt 5% of their current health as true damage every second. You receive half that amount as healing. Enemies can break the link if you move 60 units away from if they move 60 units away from you this relic has two charges a second hit on the same target will just refresh the duration so it's like i'll just show it it links you to them you're actually stealing healing this is like a perfect aries item in my opinion because you're you want to stay linked to them anyways but uh yeah if you leave the range it'll break but pretty cool item. I prefer this one. It is shorter range and it has some other downsides, but it's it's pretty cool. Pretty good stuff overall. Again, more like an Ares item for me. All right, we're, we're almost through all the relics. We've got three more to go. All right, Bracer. Bracer got some changes. So regular Bracer uh, places a ward at the location. Allies get 15% increased power if above half health. 15% increase movement speed if below half health. I, I think that's actually a huge buff from the tier 1 bracer from before. But yeah, I'm getting a little buff. My power is increased. If I were to drop health, my movement speed would be increased instead. But yeah, I can just walk in the area to refresh the effect. It acts as a ward. Pretty cool. So what does this one do instead? It's just a lower cooldown too. Yep. Also, if it gets killed, if they kill the ward, you, the cooldown gets reduced by 20 seconds, which is pretty cool. Why do I have tier 2 Sundering Spear? Wait, what? Oh, it's buggy right now. Oh, my relics are all super buggy. All right, we need to sell things. <laughs> all right. Bracer of Brilliance. So this one is 20% increased power, 20% increased movement speed for 8 seconds. So they gain both, period. You don't have to be above half health. You don't have to be below half health to get the other one. You can just kind of just get it all the time, which is pretty strong. Like 20% increase in power, 20% movement speed, and you just have to walk through this area. That's very strong. That's like having a speed buff and red buff on you and then some. Plus, I think it acts as a sentry ward, right? Yes. Acts as a sentry ward. If destroyed, the relic is reduced by 20 seconds. And the cooldown's already uh, 100 seconds. So, you know, you combine that with relic dagger. I actually kind of already showed that. Because I already had relic dagger. So, that is a 60 second cooldown. If it dies, it's just, it's just 40 seconds. So, you're going to have this all the time if you go relic dagger. I think relic dagger is so good right now with these new relics. Okay, let's show the other bracer. I don't mean to keep selling Relic Dagger. Whoops. Again, apologies if this is slow. It takes a while to go through all these. Bracer of Illumination. So this one, 
recruit. So allies who move through it, they get 15% increased power if above health, 15% movement speed if they're below half health, uh, access to sentry ward if it's destroyed you get 20, 20 seconds cooldown. Okay, so on use, a light sprite appears that patrols back and forth on a 60-unit line, revealing enemies along the way. So this is like a super ward. This is pretty good. So you can see the line it's in. So if I do this, that's actually pretty amazing. I kind of wish I could I had a mini-map in jungle practice, but I do not. But yeah, it patrols an area. So I personally like this because... If you place it like behind a wall near Fire Giant, you can see the area that they're in without actually having a ward there. So even if you don't have control of the area, you can still kind of ward it and they're going to have to spend an extra ward in a bad spot just to get rid of this thing. And then once again, if they kill it, you're just going to have it again. Like look how fast I almost have this. I, now I don't think you can have two at once. Don't think that's possible. Let's see. Oh, you totally can. Oh, I think you should always go Relic Dagger if you go Bracer. <laughs> that's insane. Because then if they kill this, you just place another. Oh, that's amazing. So this one, I think, is slightly the better one in Conquest. In Duel, I would go this one. But uh, in Conquest, this is so good because of the vision. You're still getting the power and movement speed. It's just you know at a reduced rate, and it's kind of weird to get it. But cool Relic. I love Bracer of uh, Radiance. I love it so much. All right, Curse Stonk. So this one just slows their movement speed and attack speed, right? Yep. It also... Oh, it reduces their damage dealt by 15%. That's pretty amazing for his Tier 1 Relic. So that's that. It's for 5 seconds. Wow. Tier 1, horrific. Actually pretty strong. Tier 2 just reduces the cooldown. All right. Emblem of Increasing Peril. So this one... Lowers their movement speed by 30% for 5 seconds. Their attack speed by 25%. And the duration... Uh, for the duration, sorry. Their damage dealt is reduced by 15%. If an enemy god... If an enemy deals 10% of an allied god's maximum health within the duration, the debuff effects are increased by 10% each, stacking up to 3 times. Hold on, I gotta read that one more time. If an enemy deals 10% of an allied god's maximum health within the duration the debuff effects are increased by 10 percent each stacking up to three times okay i understand it now so if let's say i pop horrific on this odin bot and then he damages one of my allies i assume it's also me and he deals 10 percent of my maximum health then the effects of this so the slow the attack speed reduction and the damage reduction would be increased by 10 percent if he does 20% of my maximum health, then they're increased by 20% and so forth. It is not the duration. I think that's pretty good and pretty bad at the same time. Because, like, unless they deal that damage right as you pop horrific, it's not going to make much of a difference. What's more likely is they'd probably deal that damage towards the end of horrific. And then the duration's already over and it doesn't matter. Alright, Emblem of Trembling Terror. So the same regular stats. And then if an enemy is dealt 30% of their max HP during this duration, they are trembled for 1.5 seconds. So this I should be able to show on the god bots. Uh, let's, let's buy like some damage real quick. Not too much damage, but just a little bit of something something. All right, so let's spawn a Guan Yu. Do this. So now he's trembled. Yeah, that was awful. That was terrible. Hold on. Can I just kill you real quick? I need to try that again. <laughs> Let's try it without using my freeze. I think he's I think he was trembled while CC'd and that made it just bad. Oh whoops, that's a wrong relic. Oh, I went out of order on the relics. My bad. I I did frenzy before horrific. Whatever. Okay, so if I do this, I mean, it's okay. It's all right. Man, the tier one horrific is strong. The upgrades I don't think are that good. Trembling them is not amazing if it's only for 1.5 seconds. 
And you have to deal 30% of their maximum health, which isn't that hard when you horrific someone. Like, when you horrific someone, that's when you're going to kill them. But trembling them, eh, it's something. But yeah, tier 1 horrific, amazing. The other one's not meant for late game. But again, that's how the item should be designed. So if you guys have any questions about the relics, let me know. And if you test them out and find something cool, make sure to leave a comment. And I will uh, you know, keep description updated for any changes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to wait until the live client because they were getting changed on PTS quite a bit. I will also make a relic uh, or a video on the glyphs. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what your favorite relics are because I think mine is Sunder or Blink or Aegis or, you know, I just love all of them. I just love all the new relics. They're amazing. All right. Bye, everybody.